Well, I'm thank you very much and good sorry. morning. That's okay. I always say if you can say Kejimakujik, you can say Kuzovnikov. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue with you. <laughs> All right. So, good morning. Again, my name is Alison Kuzovnikov, and I am the executive director of the Community Foundation of Nova Scotia, where we connect philanthropy with community needs and opportunities. Today, I would like to kick off this event by sharing with you my three aspirations for Canada's next 150 years. I would like Canada to become a more informed, a more engaged, and a more democratic society. So how could this future vision actually be achieved? We need to harness the opportunities provided by big data and to use it for the common good. At the Community Foundation of Nova Scotia, we know that our citizens don't have access to the information they need to be well informed and engaged. And we know this to be true at the local, provincial, and national levels. Our vital signs reports fill this gap with an easy to read yet comprehensive overview of quality of life in a particular community. These reports provide the facts only and let community members decide what they want to do with it. In this way, vital signs reports are tools for both community empowerment and engagement through the sharing of knowledge. Our reports give citizens the information they need to both initiate their own grassroots actions and hold our elected leaders to account. So how can big data help us to do this work better, faster, and with more impact? First, let's take a minute to understand just how big big data is. Every 48 hours, we create as much information as we did from the dawn of civilization up to 2003. Let me repeat that. We create as much information now in two days as we did from the dawn of humanity through 2003. This infographic breaks down the amount of data generated on the internet every minute of the day. Every minute of the day, Google receives over 2 million search inquiries. YouTube users upload more than 48 hours of video content. Over 100,000 tweets are sent. And brands and organizations on Facebook receive about 35,000 likes. That's every minute. This data can help us to better understand everything about who we are, what we do, and how we do it. It gives us an amazing opportunity to learn, to understand, and to share that understanding. So let's take a look at some examples of how big data and unprecedented connectivity is already being used to better inform and engage our communities, and ultimately our country. The release of public transit data to the public in some jurisdictions has spawned a new ecosystem of mobile applications, which gives citizens an opportunity to receive real-time data and provide real-time feedback. This information exchange is captured and analyzed by public administrators who use this information to optimize routes, schedules, and capacity. This feedback loop improves efficiency and results in a better allocation of public resources. It also provides better service levels to the people who actually use the system. In a similar vein, technology fuel transparency will shed a much needed light on how other aspects of our government's work. And it will give citizens an opportunity to participate in democracy in ways far beyond the ballot box. Social media has helped increase scrutiny of government by magnifying activity that would have otherwise gone unnoticed by most. Certainly, 
it cranked up the pressure for at least one Canadian mayor to resign over allegations of his involvement in the city's corrupt construction industry and has contributed to a broader public inquiry. More open data may indeed ensure that our leaders are held to account and actually responding to what the electorate wants. If only our local, provincial, and federal governments will be brave enough to open that door. So my call to action to the whole of Canada, and particularly those who lead it, whether elected or otherwise, is to embrace the open government revolution. About a month ago, US President Barack Obama issued an executive order to the entire country that open data is now the standard, not the exception. The British government did the same thing in 2010. Here in Canada, our open data policies are largely ideas without enforcement. It's time to change that. I want Canada's next 150 years to be a place where citizens have free and open, open access to data that matters to them. I want a Canada where citizens can openly share their now informed views on everything from view planes to crime rates and everything in between with those in a position to do something about it. Imagine a Nova Scotia and a Canada where you have a diversity of people offering a diversity of opinions to a government that is compelled to listen and a broader public that is eager to do something about it if they don't. So that sounds like a more informed, a more engaged, and a more democratic society to me. Wouldn't it be nice? Very nice. Thanks, Alison. Thank you very much, Allison. I just can I ask a quick question? Yeah, please do. I'm just wondering. I'm thinking of Mom, and I'm wondering how I can get her. How do you how do you get the older members of our community to realize how much information they have access to? Well, that's a great question. And one of the things that we learned uh, in our Halifax Vital Science report that we uh, released last fall was that our public libraries are really becoming a source of vast information, uh, both in old school forms, which would be uh, things like books, but also in terms of helping uh, every generation and every walk of life, both uh, new Canadians and older Canadians, um, to access uh, this data revolution. And so uh, if they visit one of their local public libraries, I'm sure they would find a, a friendly staff person who could walk them over to a computer or help them with a, their cell phone or handheld device that they may not otherwise uh, know how to use and could help them uh, to realize um, exactly the, uh, the vast amount of information that they, uh, they can access and uh, read and, and hopefully engage with. That's wonderful. And that means she'll probably not phone her children as much, asking questions <laughs> about, like, what's this button for? But that's great. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you, Edison. Thanks so much. Thanks.